Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In the last video, we saw how we can address shader graph expose properties from within the docs context. Today, we are going to look at a slightly more convoluted example where we will have projectiles firing at our ally that needs to be protected. So we have a shield around our ally to absorb the incoming projectile impacts. It is definitely not complicated as most of the scripts are in place to convert the prefabs and spawn them as entities in the scene. Let's start by looking at the shader graph. I followed this wonderful tutorial from Gabriel Agia Prod to make this shield prefab. I'll have the link in the description below for this. We will first multiply the texture of our mesh with Fresnel effect to give us a nice glow on the edge of our mesh. I personally want the shield to be barely visible and hence I have a variable exposed to control the intensity of the edges and I'm not going to intensify too much. The other part is to highlight the projectile impact point on the shield and brighten the area of impact while controlling the radius, center and fall offs. For this, we make use of sphere mask which is provided with exposed mask center and displacement which is nothing but intensity of the impact. It is inappropriately named displacement because I initially thought of having vertex displacement as well but left it out in the end. I will add it later along with other bells and whistles if it gathers more interest. But once we get the basic thing working, it should be relatively easy to add additional effects. The sphere center specifies the position of the mask on the shield which is the point of the impact. The radius specifies the size and for the fall off we are going to simply multiply the inverse Fresnel effect so the impact intensity is brighter at the point of the impact and slowly diffuses towards the edges. We now multiply this with the same texture pattern add this to the texture of our mesh and feed it to the base color. Since this intensity of the impact is going to be way more than the overall base texture of our shield, it is going to show up nicely. The initializer script has a basic entity conversion and spawner logic to spawn our shooter and the ally in specified positions. To keep this simple, there is no collider query done here to identify the position of the ally. Instead, the ally position is fed into all the turret entities during instantiation. The other thing to note is while spawning the ally, we are only attaching the ally component data and not anything else that would be responsible for addressing the shader graph exposed variables. This is because of the way we have set up our ally. The ally has a basic capsule that we are defending with the shield that is a child of capsule game object. The capsule has a sphere collider and a kinematic rigid body whereas the child is where the mask center and displacement component data is attached. These two component data address the exposed shader graph properties to specify the shader mask center and the impact intensity respectively. The reason why they are attached here at the child level is because these component data must be at the same level where the material based on the shader graph is. In this case, it is the child of our ally capsule. This is the reason I could not add it in the ally entity while we were instantiating the entity. Moving on, the shooter component contains the projectile entity itself that we have converted during initialization along with all the necessary parameters needed to move the spawned projectile in the direction of our ally. The turret system is where all the stuff happens. In an ideal world, I would actually separate the system based on the concern, but for now, the aim is to just get this working. The first loop is going to rotate the spawned turrets towards the ally. The second loop is instantiating the projectile entity using the command buffer. The projectile entity is a sphere with a sphere collider that is going to raise the collision event. Note that this has to have a physics body and physics shape with the raise collision event set. We are not setting any collision flag as we are making sure that the first collision that happens with the projectile is the ally sphere capsule. Ideally, we would also want to set these flags to specify what the collision occurs against. We will add the projectile fired component to the spawned projectile so that we can have a job to move the active projectile in the direction of our ally. We also destroy the projectile after a specific lifespan before which the collision can occur. Now that we have the projectile moving in the direction of our ally, we need to look for this impending collision against the sphere collider we defined on our ally. What happens when this collision occurs is what is defined in our collision job. 
If material we wanted to address were to exist on the same entity as the tophosphere collider, in our case the capsule, we would have simply determined if the collided entity was the ally and fetch the component data to address the exposed data graph variables. But because of the way we have set up our ally, the material we want to address actually is associated to the child of our ally and not the ally entity itself. This is the reason we are passing the child group that exists as a buffer element on entities that have child entities. We then are going to look for the corresponding child of the entity that was involved in the collision. In our case, it's the child of the ally entity that has the shield. We can then finally address the exposed shader graph variables. We are not done yet. Since this is an event and it is short lived, we cannot do any interpolation here. We can simply assign a value to the exposed variable. In this case, we are going to assign the sphere mask center along with some offset. Again, this offset is here because of the way we have set up our ally entity. We are also going to assign the max intensity to the displacement, which is another shader exposed variable to specify the intensity of the impact. The offset is used to slightly alter the hit point so we can show the effect at the right place. This is because the sphere collider on the ally capsule is slightly bigger than the shield itself. We can figure out what the offset is based on trial and error as we would be having the mask center value once the impact occurs. Also the hit point will be in world space. We have to subtract the ally entity position from the hit point to get the relative point of the impact with respect to ally. And this is the point we feed to the sphere mask center and show the hit effect. Now that this is working, we can refactor and add more functionality and VFX to this. If this gathers more interest, I'm thinking of making our ally offensive and deflect the incoming projectiles or do some vertex displacement as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, have fun.